Transformations and shifts in linear graphs is kind of intuitive and it's kind of weird, right? So let's say you had an average line, like this is a linear graph. This is a graph of a line. And essentially you're gonna like do stuff to it. You're gonna, you're gonna transform it, you're gonna shift it, you're gonna move it around. And visually you could see that you could take this thing and slide it up and down, slide it right and left, and it wouldn't change much. So if this was, you know, let's say pretend like this was y equals whatever, 2x plus one, well then I could just move the whole thing up one, right? Now I have a new graph, which is y equals 2x plus two. I just shifted it from one, I added one vertically to two, so that's a shift. You could also go down one, right? And you would have y equals 2x, it used to be plus one, I went down one, so now that's plus zero, even though that's not very accurate. So you get the point, up and down, makes sense. What about shifting it in other weird ways, right? So you can also, you can move a graph up and down, but you can also affect its steepness. So if this is a linear graph, what would I have to do to it to swivel it so that it was steeper, right? You could do that, you could affect that. What if I took this linear graph and I actually flipped it the other way? So the question is, is how do, you know, what, what do you do to linear equations to cause these transformations? And this is the easiest way to, to visualize it. You know the famous y equals mx plus b. So b, in every case, when you alter b, that's going to shift it up or down, right? So if I added 3 to my b, the whole thing went up 3. If I took 3 away from my b, the whole graph went down by 3. So this is any kind of vertical, well, that's nice, that's nice writing right there, vertical change, right? The M is more complex. When you start messing with the slope, remember this is Y equals MX plus B. M is the slope and B is the y-intercept. When you start messing with slope, you're affecting how steep or less steep that curve is, right? That, excuse me, it's not a curve, it's a line. How steep or less steep that line is. And more importantly, what if you mess with the sine of M? So let's say you had Y equals three X plus who cares, five, right? If I made this, a multiple of two, let's say y equals six x plus five. I've taken my line and made it steeper by a multiple of two. Look at this little, this little transformation. You ready for this one? What if I did y equals three, excuse me, negative three x plus five. I used to have a graph with a slope of three and now I've flipped it across the y axis. Now it's going in the negative direction. So you can see how manipulating these will change how your uh, line looks. Okay, so let's do a couple sample problems. Well, freebies I got you for you. So it'll say something like this. Describe the transformation if f of x equals, you know, who cares, x, and g of x equals x plus 5, it'll say, explain the transformation from f of x to g of x. And you would say, because of Ryan's little educational YouTube videos, that's easy. The whole thing went up 5. This was plus nothing, now it's plus five, it went up five. Describe the transformation of f of x to g of x in this case. Well, from f of x being x to g of x, it went down three, totally easy. Okay, now I'm gonna throw some weird ones at you. Are you ready for this? Let's say <coughs> you had f of x was three x and g of x is negative three x. Describe the transformation this one I'm going to draw because it's a little less clear. If you graphed this, the y-intercept is zero, and it goes up three over one, it looks roughly like that, right? Except it goes to the origin. If you graph this, it starts at zero and it goes down three over one. So this is exactly the inverse. So the answer to a question like this, if you said, what happened from f of x to g of x? What was the transformation? It was flipped across the y-axis. You see, it was like this and we essentially flipped it across the vertical y-axis. So that's that transformation. One more, I'll give you another transformation since you're into them. What if it was like this? It was like, okay, so if f of x, you know, we'll start with f of x was something <laughs> relatively simple, like, okay, two x plus five. And then g of x was six x plus five. What did we do? What was the transformation to here to here? We multiplied the slope by three, so this essentially started as one, two, three, four, five, up two over one. We made the slope steeper by a multiple of 
3, right? Exactly. So it was 2x. Now it's literally, instead of up 2 over 1, it's up 6 over 1. It's far more steep. The steepness was increased by a multiple of 3. The only other weird thing, so transformations, honestly, they're pretty easy. You get it. You mess with this or this to get, you know, some transformations. The only other thing that I think is weird is this. I've seen questions like this where it'll say, describe g of x in terms of f of x. So let's say you had, okay, f of x. I got some problems written down here off the screen that you can't see. So f of x is x plus 2, and g of x is 3x plus 6. And they'll say, describe the transformation. You could tell that actually looking at this, you're like, well, it got steeper by 3, but it went up 4. More importantly, this whole sucker times 3 is this whole sucker. So g of x is essentially 3 times f of x. Was that mind-blowing? That makes sense. This times 3 is this. So g of x is 3 times f of x. Did you hate that one? All right, let me, let me do one that's a little more straightforward. Let's say they said, okay, g of f of x is x plus 2, g of x is x plus 4. You didn't change the slope, but it looks like you went up 2. So g of x would be basically f of x plus 2. That's all. You took the original function and you added 2. Okay, now is the part where everyone's going to like send me hate emails. This one's pretty weird. Okay, so what if you had, so far you're with me, I can tell. We're getting along pretty well. But now this is going to be like a relationship harmer. Okay? This one's trippy. So let's say you had f of x is 2x plus 5 and g of x is 4x plus 5. How do you change the slope without changing this, this 5? They definitely changed the 2. So here's what it is. Are you ready? g of x is equal to f of 2x. Notice I didn't put a 2 in front of the f of x. I didn't multiply the whole thing by 2. I only multiplied the little x guy by 2. So it doesn't affect the 5. Do you hate me? Again, this is not 2 times f of x, because that would distribute to both be 4x plus 10. If you put it on the inside of the parentheses like that, you put on the inside of the parentheses, only the x gets multiplied by 2, not the whole function. Are we so cool? You know, I feel bad because all these videos later, we really have a good rapport. And now you're mad at me. So that's it. That's the most confusing part of this whole thing. Uh, and I think beyond that, transformations of lines make sense. They get steeper. They get less steep. They get flipped, right? And they can move up and down. And remember, if you're having a hard time with your uh, math class at your local high school, you can take this online at Silicon Valley High School, and the credits will be transferred back to your school.